how to get more listings and focus on listings. So I recently did a poll on YouTube and in this Facebook group asking you how you were struggling when it came to lead generation. And I was surprised to see that a lot of you want to focus on listings, but you have no idea how to get them. So in the next couple minutes, I decided, you know what, I'm going to hop on here. I want to share a little bit of my story and how I got started with listings. Um, I also want to give you guys some tips so that you can implement immediately if you want to start focusing on sellers and getting listings and those type of leads. Uh, so get your pen and your paper ready. There's going to be a lot of different things that I'm going to be sharing with you. Some of the things I have mentioned in my YouTube videos before, maybe you have seen them, maybe you haven't. Um, but yeah, I want to talk about listings because I think that this is really important. I'm sure that there are so many of you currently out there working with buyers. Maybe you have been driving around working with these buyers that maybe they don't get their offers accepted or they have wasted your time or maybe they end up buying a car and now they can't purchase a home. I mean, there's so many different things that can happen when you're working with buyers. Now, just to kind of give you a little backstory of how I got started um, and why I decided to go after for sale by owners and expireds. I know that I posted a reel in here yesterday, kind of sharing a story about a for sale by owner that only wanted to charge 4%. So to take you back, I got my license in 2015. Back when I got my license, you know, there wasn't all of these different YouTube channels that would teach or talk about so many different things that you could do in real estate. So for me, I knew that I wanted to focus on listings. I was never told that I had to work with buyers from the start. Uh, so I said, you know what, how do I get listings? So the very first book that I ever read was how to develop a six figure income by Mike Ferry. If you have never read that book, I highly recommend it. You can get it. You can probably read it in like one or two days. And it really breaks down exactly the things that you need to be doing to be a listing agent. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to focus on listings is because I saw that as a listing agent, it seemed like they had more control of what would happen in terms of their time. And at the end of the day, you know, if a buyer's offer didn't get accepted, that agent would now have to go back and show their buyers more properties until they finally get so, got something under contract versus being a listing agent where you're the one that's kind of like calling the shots. It, it's, I, I like to say it and I've heard many people say it, do you want to be the employer or do you want to be the employee, right? Uh, we know that when the market was crazy, like back what, 2021, there were some listings that were getting like 20, 40, 50 offers. I don't know where you were at, but I was seeing those crazy numbers back in California. And unfortunately, I was working with some buyers back then that we were just not getting our offers accepted. They didn't have crazy amounts of money to put an extra on top of the purchase price. So it was very difficult to, to get my clients under contract. So again, going back to when I got my license, 2015, I started to go after expired and for sale by owners. I knew that these were the low hanging fruit. These were individuals that were raising their hand. They were like, you know what? I'm looking to sell. It didn't mean that they were necessarily motivated or serious, but the fact that they were interested in selling, that is what made me want to go after them. Now, if you've been watching my channel, you know that I'm very big when it comes to cold calling. A lot of you know that a lot of you have tried to cold call but nothing happens. Maybe you just pick up the phone and you don't even press send. Um, I know rejection sucks. You know, I was scared of picking up the phone when I started too, but I knew that at the end of the day, someone needed my help, whether it was a for sale by owner or an expired, they needed to sell. And if I wasn't calling them, there was going to be another agent calling them that was going to set that appointment and get that commission whether it was a $5,000 commission or a $25,000 commission, they were going to get that deal. And there are hundreds of thousands of people out there that need your help. So that was the very first thing. My mentality changed. It's not me calling and bugging. It's me more like finding that next family that needs to make this move happen. And unfortunately, the last agent didn't do their job. So now I have to come in and demonstrate to them 
that I am so much better than that last agent and I can help them make their move from Los Angeles to Texas or whatever that was. So again, I wasn't an expert in the beginning, but I knew that if I wanted to focus on these type of leads, I would have to build confidence. And the way that I built my confidence was by actually making the calls. I was making the calls. I was role playing every single day. I was role playing the exact scenarios that I would hear in the mornings. So I, I like to say I had a very military schedule. So if you're watching this and you kind of let your day go by and you do, a, you, I don't know, you wake up like at eight or nine or whatever it is, reevaluate what your routine looks like and be very disciplined with your schedule. Because some of you, you need to see this as a business. You are a business owner. If you are not putting in the work, you're probably not going to get paid. Or maybe you need to change what you're doing because you're tired of working with buyers. You're tired of giving your nights and your weekends to showing homes. And you'd rather probably be at home with your family or doing something else. So start with your schedule. So for me, I was able to do real estate full time. So from 7.30 or 7 to 8, I was role playing every single day. Every single day. Role playing with people that were better than me. So I was able to find role play partners and I'm like, look, don't be easy on me. I, you got to be hard because let's face it. If you've made cold calls, you know that you get tough people on the phone, but that's how I started to get better. I went after the for sale by owners because I knew again, they wanted to sell expired. Again, they tried to sell. And for one reason or another, they came off the market and sold. So I needed to be very good at figuring out people's motivations for why they needed to sell. So there's a lot of scripts out there. If you don't have any scripts, look at Mike Ferry scripts or Kevin Ward scripts. Those are ones that I highly recommend and start learning them. If you want to focus on listings, I also recommend that you start learning your listing presentation. And I'm not talking about slides or PowerPoint presentation. I'm talking about the actual listing presentation where it's you sitting down with a potential seller and role playing how that conversation would go. I have a YouTube video on my channel where it's me role playing the entire listing presentation with another agent from my office back, I think in like 2018. And you can watch that video. And that's exactly what you need to be doing right now and practicing. Because for many of you, you need to get into that the mindset and the mentality of being a listing agent. You know, do you see yourself as a listing agent? Only you can answer that. Do you see yourself selling homes, 5, 10, 20 homes a month? Or do you see yourself running around showing buyers? Not that there's anything wrong with that, but where do you see yourself? Because for me, I saw myself being a listing agent having five, 10 listings a month and being able to, to perform the best that I could with every single client. So a lot of it comes down to your mindset. I mentioned earlier, rejection. Rejection is part of this business, you know, whether we're working with buyers and they end up going with somewhere else with someone else and they ghost you or whether you are, you know, on the phones and then someone yells at you or, or cusses you out and hangs up. Like, it's just a part of the business. Um, I was never like a pro on the phone, but I can tell you that over time I got thick skin and I knew that that next person could be that yes, that would be able to um, allow me to set an appointment with them, meet up with them, and I could get that property sold. So one of my very first listings that I ever got, I was calling expireds you know, and I made it a goal to talk to at least 30 people every single day, 30 people. If you're not talking to at least 10 people a day, at least start there. Because again, the more people you talk to every single day, the closer you're going to get to that person that needs your help. And even earlier this morning, I was on a role play session with a Mike Ferry coach. I promoted it uh, on my Facebook group. And he said, you know, at the end of the day, you can make all these contacts, but if you're not setting appointments, you're not really getting anywhere. You're building a database for eventually some of these people to convert, but the goal is to set an appointment. And for me, that was my goal. My goal was to at least set an appointment every single day. Now, 
that may be too much for you. Maybe you want to set your, your goal to set at least one appointment a week. But for me, I said, you know what? I'm doing this full time. I don't have any deals. I need to hit the phones because I want listings. So I was making 30 contacts every day. And this specific day that I'm going to share with you, I remember that it was around four o'clock and I wanted to just hang up already. I wanted to stop because I kept on getting people that were upset and aggravated. And then I got to this phone call and it was an older gentleman. And he said, oh, you realtors sound the same. You're all horrible. And here's the thing. When you hear someone on the phone kind of go off, it's because they probably had a bad experience. And many times they are still motivated to sell. So if someone is staying on the phone with you, it's because they probably had some type of motivation. And because they didn't sell, that affects now their plans or what they wanted to do or even their life. So in this case, the gentleman, he kept on talking bad about realtors. I saw that he had been on the market for like 200 plus days, which now got me curious as to what happened. So I just started asking open-ended questions. I asked, you know, I see that you, you were on the market for over 200 days. What happened? What do you think stopped the home from selling? Where would you be moving to next? So as I'm having this conversation with this gentleman, turns out that he was 65. He lived in a home that was over 3,000 square feet and the home was too big for him. He could barely go up the stairs. He said, I rarely go up the stairs. So I knew that this gentleman needed to sell. Not because I wanted to get a listing and a paycheck, but because this man's health was on the line. If he stayed in that house, he could possibly fall and break a hip or something worse could happen. So I kept on on asking questions. I had my script and that's something that I recommend for you to do. Always have at least a script in front of you when you're making calls. So as I was going down the questions that I needed to find out to see if this is a person that I could actually help, um, it turns out that he was adamant about a certain price that he wanted to sell the property for. And he said, you know, I want 1.5 million. And that was his thing, 1.5. As I kept asking more questions, it turns out that selling at market value, he would net what he want in his pocket. And what had happened was that the previous agents were listing the property for 1.5 when in reality market value was 1 million. And that's why this property was just not selling. And those agents were doing a disservice to this seller. Long story short, ended up listing that property, ended up selling it and representing both the buyer and the seller. And that was from an expired call from a gentleman that sounded pissed and upset and was probably one of the last people that I spoke that I spoke to that day. So many of you, maybe you have started making calls or maybe you tried making calls and someone was rude to you on the phone and then you just decided to hang up or give up on it because I don't know, they hurt your feelings. In this business, look, people are going to hurt your feelings. That's why you you can never take any of this to heart. Don't take it personal. You can't be emotionally invested in this because, you know, you can have a bad conversation. And then that next conversation, you're going to get someone that says, you know what, Loida, I'm so glad that you called. I was just talking to my husband about wanting to sell this home. Oh, my God. It's like God sent you. Conversations like that happen. So I wanted to share that because I think that many of you are scared of picking up the phone or having these conversations when you think that people are super pissed and upset. And yeah, they probably are. And some you are, you probably just never want to work with them, but there will be some that as long as you continue hearing them, they're going to tell you their entire life story and why they needed to sell and what's important to them. So to recap, Know your listing presentation, go and watch it on my YouTube channel and have conversations. Now, what type of lead sources will actually give you listings? I've said for sale by owners. So these are homeowners that are trying to sell the property on their own and they think that they can do it. And you know what? They probably can. Now, the question is, will they sell the property for the most? That's one of the questions that came up recently in a role play that I did here for the group. Um, someone said, you know, I think that they can sell and yeah, you know, anybody can sell a property. However, with an agent, they're missing so much exposure. So when you know the value that you bring to the table 
and then they compare that to what they're doing, there's a big difference. And if what is important to them is making the most money, then it's important for them to at least give you a chance and see how you can help them in the sale of the property, assuming that they are motivated and serious and realistic when it comes to the price. As you become a listing agent, you have to be very, very careful with the type of clients that you're willing to take and reject. Because let me tell you, I've set a lot of appointments that I have ended up canceling because the homeowners were just not realistic on the price. You know, I'm on completely different planets when it comes to the price. And I am not going to overprice a property. The moment that you overprice a property, if they're not getting the results that they thought that they were going to get, it's going to be very hard for you to convince them to come down on the price of what market value should be, because they're going to be stuck on the fact that you took that listing for that, you know, let's say it was 1.5 million and it's really worth a million. They're going to be like, well, no, Lloyda, you said you can get me 1.5. Why are you, why do you want me to lower 500,000 now that's coming out of my pocket? So you never want to get into that situation. I, I say I'd rather price the property aggressively so that we can get multiple offers and then bid it up. That helps you look like a hero because now you're getting multiple offers by having that type of activity. You can now negotiate the best price and terms for your seller versus the other way around where let's say you only have one offer and they come in way below asking price. Now it's like you tr you're trying to put a deal together. It may or may not happen. And if it's an overpriced listing and the sellers are adamant about the price that they want and you took it knowing that it was overpriced, what's going to happen is that you're going to have to have a very tough conversation straightforward with them. Or what they're, what they're going to do is that they're going to feel like they're the ones calling the shots. And let me, let me remind you, you are the real estate professional. So you need to know when to put your foot down and let them know the reality of the situation, even if it means you walking away and canceling that contract and giving them the listing back. And I'm telling you this because I have done it. And the moment that you do it, you're going to feel so much better. But the key is to not put yourself in that position. So we have the for sale by owners expired. Same thing. You know, they came off the market for one reason or another and they still need to sell. So you need to be able to have conversations where you're actually listening to them. So if you have a script, have it there, but also be listening to what they're saying, because then from there you can position yourself in a way that you can demonstrate how you are a much better agent than the last one that they had. Because they might say, oh, you know, the last agent never communicated with us. We never heard from them. The marketing, the marketing was bad. So then now I can say, okay, perfect. So, you know, it sounds like you want someone that's going to be giving you updates, letting you know what's going on. So you're never out of the loop. Um, someone that, you know, knows what they're doing with the marketing. Yes. Okay, perfect. So, so now you can position yourself in a way that you're already much better than the last agent. Another lead source that you can go after, let's say you don't have any listings. You don't, you're not a part of a team. You're trying to make things happen in this business on your own. Start calling just listed, just sold, start calling neighborhoods, get phone numbers and find a listing that just sold or was just listed and start calling around it. You never know what other neighbors might be interested in buying or selling or know someone that wants to move in that area. Um, another great thing that you can do is actually door knock them. So you can door knock expires. You can door knock Fizbo's, you can door knock neighborhoods. I have done all of that. I have gotten leads. It absolutely works. Um, of course, if you go and door knock, I would recommend go with someone else. Let someone know where you're going to be at. Carry pepper spray just in case, you know, I know some neighborhoods get crazy, but I think you know the neighborhoods that you would want to be in and not be in. And you're wise enough to, to know what, what situations to avoid. But door knocking absolutely works, you know. And in fact, if you're able to go door to door or face to face, the chances of them remembering you and actually uh, want to set an appointment are going to be much higher because there are no other realtors that are probably door knocking them. So as I'm mentioning to you all of these lead sources, 
there are a lot of different programs out there. You'll hear me talk about Vulcan 7 all the time. That's the service that I use because look, if you want to be efficient, if you want to be a great listing agent, you're also going to have to invest in yourself and, and get phone numbers from somewhere because yes, you can pull up the phone numbers from the MLS and do fast people search and like reverse engineer all of this, but it is, that's just not a good uh, way to spend your time. So get something like Vulcan 7. It gives you expired for sale by owner and neighborhood phone numbers, and it comes with a dialer because, again, you also don't want to be dialing one number at a time because then that just takes forever. And for me, I'm all about being efficient and productive, even if I have to invest in myself and in my system so that I can get to that next listing faster. So FISBOs, expired neighborhood phone numbers, do the just listed, just sold. These are just some of the few lead sources that you can start with. But again, you have to actually, like I said, I like to pick up the phone, make those phone calls. Cold calling still works. I said it earlier, you know, I feel like there's so many distractions nowadays with, oh, let's do video or property tours. And yeah, absolutely, all of that works. I recommend for you to do it but I wouldn't recommend for you to focus on that 100%. You need to be able to generate leads some way, and there's always going to be expires and for sale by owners. Then need to move, they need to sell. And the great thing about also being a listing agent is that you get more business because the moment they put a sign in the yard or the moment that you get a listing, you're probably gonna get phone calls from people that are interested in purchasing that property and maybe they might not qualify for that specific property, but now you can ask them, you know, what they're looking for. So now you get another lead. And as a buyer's agent, yeah, you can talk to your buyers to see if they know anybody else, but the likelihood of you getting more business, you're probably going to get it from listings that you have. Listings bring more clients, whether it's buyers or more listings. Also in certain neighborhoods, it has happened where I have listed a property and I door knocked around it. And once that property was sold, you know, the neighbors saw how quick the property sold, what we did. And they were like, you know what? I want you to sell my house. I've been thinking about it. I've had my eye on this property, but it seems like you guys know what you're doing. So can you, can you see how much we can sell this property for? But you have to be very confident, again, when it comes to pre-qualifying and also your listing presentation. Being a listing agent requires more skill because there's going to probably be a lot more objections that you have to handle. Objections of commission, objections of maybe how many homes have you sold, but it will come down to how confident you are and how confident you come across. 